Smartcast. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. We need to be the example, the man that God has called us to be. That is the strongest tool that we have when it comes to leading others or being a good father is our example. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. This is another special Wednesday morning episode brought to you by our sponsors, Jeremy Clevenger Fitness and the Sasquatch Flag Company. Both of these sponsors help me bring these shows to you each and every week, so I encourage you to click on their links below and check them out. I have another great show lined up for you today, but before we get started, I just want to remind you to check out the leadership books I've written on either Amazon or my website, johnsrenny.com. This year, I'm offering a new way to purchase all of my books for a discount. I've bundled the books into what I call the Qualified Leadership Series, and you get all three books for 15% off the individual prices. This offer is only available on my website, so check it out if you're looking to step up your leadership game this year. Also, I want to remind you that Deep Leadership is ranked as a top 100 management podcast in the U.S. and in the U.K., and I wanted to thank each and every one of you for listening in each week and sharing these episodes with your friends. You have helped this podcast grow into a top-performing show, so thank you very much. Today, we're going to be talking about building a strong legacy, and my guest is Jerry Adams. Jerry is the author of a brand new book called Men of Grit, Strongest Steel, How to Build a Legacy of Unbreakable Strength. In this episode, Jerry helps us understand the importance of men building legacies in their homes, at work, and in their communities. Now, this episode is primarily focused on the men in our audience, but I think everyone will appreciate Jerry's passion for leadership and self-improvement. So, are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a returning guest to the show, Jerry Adams. You might remember him from back in episode 112. Jerry is a veteran leader in the steel industry, and he's the guy that steel mills call when they need to improve operational performance. And what I love about Jerry is he focuses primarily on the people, and in doing so, he gets amazing results. Jerry is the author of a brand new book called Men of Grit, Strong as Steel, How to Build a Legacy of Unbreakable Strength. And in this book, Jerry addresses the crisis of modern masculinity, particularly within the Christian community. He offers a framework for building strength into the lives of men, their sons, and those they lead. And I'm excited to talk to him about the importance of men building legacies in their homes, at work, and in their communities. So, Jerry, welcome back to the show. Great to be back, John. I appreciate you having me on again. Uh, Enjoyed the first time, and I'm sure this one's going to be great, too. So. Looking forward to talking about my new book. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, your show, last time you were on, was one of more, my most popular shows that year. So a lot of people, it, it, your message resonated with a lot of folks. And now you have a book. You didn't have a book back then. Now you do. Uh, and I'm excited about it because this is your first book, and it, it's almost become an overnight success. It, it became an Amazon bestseller, a number one new release, and right out of the gate. Such an amazing performance. So congratulations on this book getting out there and making such an impact in a short amount of time. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it kind of blows you away. You know, you never know when you write a book, you put it out there and it's like, well, I, I, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I wonder how this is going to work, you know, and then you start getting that feedback and, um, it's exciting. It's a message I feel, I feel passionate about, you know, and, uh, so it's good to see the response. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I went to your first book launch. That was that was exciting. That was fun. A great, great turnout for that uh, down in Charlotte. That was a lot of fun. So the book is called uh, Men of Grit, Strong as Steel. Uh, tell us about the inspiration behind the book and who it was written for. Yeah, you know, um, this book came out of my own experience. And what I discovered is that the experience that I had that brought me to 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 where I am today and the path that I'm on today, which I talk about in the book, is an experience that a lot of men have. You know, you 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 go through life and you start checking off the list. You you marry the woman that you want to marry. You buy the house. You start to have the kids. You you start driving the cars that you want. Your career takes off and is successful. And it, it almost seems like with men, a lot of times when we're, we're out there and we're chasing all these challenges and we're checking off the boxes, and then there comes this time where you start to get comfortable. Mm. And after a while, you start to seek comfort. And comfort leads to complacency, and complacency kills that fire in the masculine soul. Mm. And that's what I experienced. And so... You got men that come home from work and they're tired. They put everything they got in work. They come home, they're tired, and they have nothing left for the family. And they feel like, I deserve to rest. I deserve to take it easy. And But the reality is, is that that's a time to put on a new hat. And you need to have that energy to be able to go in and lead in your home like you're leading at work. And... You know, for me, I, I lost my way. And and so I started to realize that there was something missing and I was out of shape. I was overweight. I, I felt like I didn't have the energy. And so I started looking around for answers and I started looking around for men. And I started in the church, looking around within the church and said, okay, are there men here? that I want to strive to be like. Mm. And and I'm not saying there there weren't anywhere, but I was really having a hard time finding men that were serious about dialing themselves in body, mind, and spirit, you know? And um, at least as serious as I knew I needed to be in order to change. And it really affected everything in my life. It affected my relationship with my wife, that complacency, when it sets in, you know, the people closest to you start to suffer mm. and it damages those relationships. And, you know, soon the spark is gone and the things that mean the most to you, you can tell that they're starting, you're, you, they're starting to um, deteriorate mm. and you're losing them. And so, it it was a wake up call for me. It was a it was a blood test. You know, I got a bad blood test, and I was like, "Wow, I am really out of shape." And it opened my eyes, and it opened my eyes to a lot of other things too. So so that um, that was my journey. And when I came through that, and I started to get on the right path, I got around strong men, and I started doing the things that made me stronger and stronger every day. And from that foundation of strength, I was able to build back that relationship with my wife and with my son and and have the energy and all the things that I needed to be able to do. So it's all those lessons that kind of came together. I found out that I fell back on lessons from my dad from years ago, right? And so that journey, when I started speaking about that and talking about that, it resonated with other men. And they were like, oh, yeah, I kind of find myself in that same spot. Mm. And so I was like, well, there's something here because I'm sharing these lessons with guys one-on-one. And it seems to be resonating. And I've always wanted to write a book to inspire men to be better men. But I knew I needed to be the example first. Mm. I needed to get on the right path myself. So that and then my dad passed away in 2021. And prior to that, I had a conversation with him and I was talking to him about men of grid and what I wanted to do to try to help men um, on the path that I started to, to, to go down. And this was after I had been on that path for a few years. And 
really got myself in better shape and and was was doing a lot better. Um, and I remember what my dad said. My dad said to me in the course of that conversation, he said, Jerry said, men, men need this more now than ever. They need to hear what you have to say. You need to do this. And, you know, that conversation when he passed, it, you know, that put a fire in me. Mm -hmm. And, and then it was like, okay, it's time to write this book. And, and so that's, that's what really put that fire in that inspiration for me to, to write, you know, men are strong as steel. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's powerful. And, uh, by the way, uh, those who are watching on YouTube, this is the book and you can see it. You cannot miss it. It's got a great cover, uh, with the steel mill there in the middle of it and, uh, the arc furnace, uh, which you talk about in the book. Um, this, uh, a lot of this book was influenced. You talk about your dad. A lot of it was influenced by your father. Tell us about the kind of man he was, because I think you talk about it in the book and, uh, he's, he's kind of an unusual guy. And, uh, and, and you get, you know, I've had a chance to go uh, up to uh, the hunting camp where you guys spent a lot of time and I felt his energy in that place, just the kind of person he was. Tell, tell the audience what kind of person, uh, your dad was. Yeah, my dad was, um, he was an interesting character. He was, he was tough. Uh, when you looked at him, he had this intimidating look to him. They called him Grizz, and uh, that was from an old movie back in the day, Grizzly Adams. And it just so happened at the time he was living in a tent. I talk about that in the book. I talk about how how he lived while he was um, while he was he was uh, fixing up the house so that we could live in it. And um, you know, he was in a tent in the winter, in the snow, in Pennsylvania, and. And he was just a, he was a tough dude. And, and, you know, people saw that movie with a beard and he had the same thing and they started calling him Grizzly Adams and that became Grizz and it was Grizz all the way through until he died. I mean, most, a lot of people only knew him as Grizz. Like they didn't even know his real name. <laughs> and so it was interesting, but he was tough. He was a protector. He was, he could be fierce. He was a thinker. He thought about things deeply. Um, he was a leader and a mentor to many. He, he, a lot of my friends that I ran around with that maybe lost their way or they didn't have fathers or whatever. My dad, he, he became their father and their mentor. And then he did the same thing at work. And so he was really good with understanding people and leading people. And he was, he had such, he had this dichotomy of, you know, on the one side, he's this tough, intimidating guy that when you when you ran up on him, you were like, oh, man, I don't want to mess with that guy. And yet, at the same time, he was the man that that um, he had a heart. And, you know, he those that he loved and those that 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 came into his circle, they knew that that he cared for them. There was no doubt, you know, and I write in the book the things that he did to me when I was growing up, you know, with, um, or he did for me, you know, I talk about when I used to get migraine headaches and he would stay up and walk with me at night because that was the only way I could get relief. And, and he would do that and he had to work the next day, but that's just how he was. When we first started hunting, he hunted in blue jeans. He bought me a full insulated hunting suit so that I was taken care of and he hunted in blue jeans, you know, in, in the winter in, in Pennsylvania. And so he, he just, um, you know, I, I, I say in his, when I spoke at his funeral, I talk about that he was my hero. You know, he was, he, he, he was the type of man that I think men in the church need to be in in this way. And this is the thing that I saw in my dad that that really struck me. And then when I went into scripture, I was like, man, a lot of the men are like this. Mm. And that is, he spoke boldly, like he spoke the truth that people needed to hear that maybe they didn't want to hear. Um, he spoke the things that needed to be said. He did the things that nobody else wanted to do, but needed to get done. He was bold that way. He, he, and, 
And I see that boldness throughout scripture in men. And I'm like, you know, men need to be more like that. And I've seen it. Like, I know what that looks like, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I saw I saw all kinds of things with my dad. I, I remember, I mean, I got all kinds of stories. A lot of them are in the book. You need to get the book. You know, get so, the book and read yeah. the stories to find out about what he did with the horse. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You you touched on something I really like. And, you, you know, you mentioned the, the Bible, the men of the Bible, right? Uh, and there's there's so many examples of this. They were strong. They were brave, courageous. They were faithful. Uh, when I look at the Reformation uh, movement and the men that w- did what they did and, and they were willing to die for what they believed in, they were bold. Just like you mentioned your dad, they were bold. And, and, and so the question is, what happened? <laughs> what happened to Christian men? We, you know, a lot of times in the church, you, you don't see men like that, you know? Uh, and, uh, you know, when someone's looking for that, as you said, you were looking in the church for an example of a, a masculine man that's, that's leading their family properly, and you didn't find it necessarily. What do you think is wrong? What happened? Why, where do we lose this message of being bold and courageous and being strong uh, like the men in the Bible were? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, um, it's there, but it's rarely ever brought to the surface. And I think part of that is that we we don't preach to men mm. often. And and so, you know, you you look at you look at Jesus. Jesus went into uh his enemy's territory and he confronted them directly about the things that they were doing that were hindering people from coming to God. Mm. He addressed it face to face on his own while his disciples were behind him saying things like, you know, you're offending them. So they weren't there as like his backup. They were, they were there to try to, they wanted him to be safe. Yes. They wanted him, they wanted him to be nice and nice is this term, the way I use the term nice is it's a man that does not cause riffles. He's not going to shake the tree. He's not going to stir things up. And if you read the Gospels and you see Jesus, he was not that kind of, man. like if there was yeah. something to be addressed, he said it. And and sometimes very directly yeah. and and with boldness. You see that in Paul. You see that John the Baptist, you see King David, you know, when King David's like, okay, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he's like, well, go up and fight these guys. Okay, boom. And off he went, right? And he, you know, even the story of Goliath, you know, when he, when it came time for him to go to the battle line, what's interesting and what I love about that story is David ran. David ran. Yeah. Yeah. Ran at him yeah. with that stone, nothing more than a stone. You know, against the 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 mightiest warrior of the day, and so there's a boldness and there's a strength. You know, over three hundred times, three hundred plus times, God says in the Scripture, "Be strong." And almost all of those times are to men. Mm. Be strong, be strong, be strong and courageous. Be very strong. You know, and so uh, um, you see all this, and then. I, I see us, instead of being influenced by that standard that is in the Bible, we tend to not bring that standard to the surface and be influenced by the outside world. Mm. And so we've we've toned some of those things down. And so men, I think a lot of men within the church are in the shadows. They're on the sidelines. They're not in the game. And we're not really pushing them to get them in the game Mm. in a lot of churches. I think there are churches out there that are doing this. They are starting to, to, to push men to a higher standard, but God calls us to a very high standard. And, and he tells us that he gives us a spirit, not of fear, not of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Yeah. You know, and and so I'm like, okay, well, where is that that boldness? Where is that power? You know, and the dichotomies there, it's the same thing I saw with my dad. Power and love. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you see in Jesus too. Yeah. You see, Jesus is like, hey, 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 hang on, hang on. 
let the little kid come up here. Let him sit on my lap. You let him in, right? Yeah. And then it, and then you also see Jesus that he's going right in and going face to face and calling people out. Yeah, yeah. He's doing both. He's stepping up to the woman that's going to be stoned, and he steps in the middle. You know, and here's all these men standing around the circle with stones in their hands, ready to let him rip. And he jumps in the middle of it and says, okay, I'll tell you what, you guys have no sin, cast the first stone. Like he he engaged. Yeah. He was the protector. Yeah. You know? So anyway, I see that. And I think um, I think we stop preaching to men. I th- I don't think we expect much from men in our churches. Yeah. yeah. And and so and the other side of it is, you know, we 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 neglect the 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 physical side of of a man's life and how it directly relates to his ability to be disciplined and have the energy that he needs to lead well. And so we we neglect that side of it too and and I think that really that really hurts men because men you know, that's a part of being a strong man. Yeah, you know, having yourself in good shape, and and you know that affects everything else. You know your mindset, your discipline, all of that. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. Best-selling leadership author John S. Rennie knows this. That's why he's written a new book called You Have the Watch. It's a guided journal for leaders designed to take you through an entire year of leadership training. By the end of the year, you will master 50 of the most important leadership skills. If you want to have a greater impact on the results and people in your organization, go to youhavethewatch.com and pick up your copy today. This episode is brought to you by Jeremy Clevenger Fitness. As a high-performing leader, you know that leadership isn't about telling people what to do. It's about leading by example. And for most people, the one area that they're lacking when it comes to leading by example is their health and fitness. By improving your health and fitness, every other area of your life improves. But how do you get and stay fit as a busy leader? Well, you do what you've always done. You hire the best person for the job. Don't struggle on your own. Put Jeremy Clevenger on your team. Jeremy will work with you to take your physique, mindset, nutrition, habits and more to the next level with his step-by-step all-inclusive coaching program. Now I've worked with Jeremy for the past year and I'm in the best shape of my life. If you want to step up your game, reach out to Jeremy at apexperformancesystems.com to find out more and get your initial consultation scheduled with him today. This episode is brought to you by the Sasquatch Flag Company. The Sasquatch Flag Company is a family-owned business in New England that builds hand-carved American flags from seasoned white pine. Each flag is hand Hand built, and each star on the flag is hand hammered and chiseled. No two flags are alike. They offer a variety of flag designs to honor the police, military, firefighters, dispatchers, and search and rescue personnel, to name a few. These stunning handmade flags look great in an office, a studio, the back porch, or above the fireplace mantle. They make the perfect gift for the veteran, first responder, or patriot in your life. Now, I love these flags, and I've been giving them as gifts for years, and I was a customer long before they became a sponsor of the show. I can't recommend them enough, so if you're looking for that perfect, uniquely American make gift to give away or if you want to treat yourself go to sasquatchflags.com and get your order in today you talk about the forge of the daily grind uh tell us uh what that looks like and why it's so important that men master this uh concept yeah the forge of the daily grind is it's those things that you do every day that make you a stronger man in body mind and spirit and in the book, I I go through a lot of exercises that that I went through to, and I and I talk about the I talk about the physical side, and I talk about you know some of the things that we really don't want to talk about. You know, we don't want to talk about gluttony in the church. We don't want to talk about laziness. You know, the scripture talks about the sloth, right? The 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 slovenly, the you know the one the the person that's just you know, you know, we become comfortable and then complacent. And what is that? That that's what it is. And so, next thing you know, we are lazy and we overeat, and we're not active. You know, and then this sets in, and now 
we're killing our men with with you know heart disease and and diabetes and all these things that are taking men out of the game way too early. So how are you going to fulfill the mission when when you're you're going back and forth to the doctor, you're on every drug in the world, you know, you can you you don't have the energy, you know, and this is all throughout it's pervasive it's all throughout our churches all over this country and we should see something better there so so i talk about the forge of the daily grind and i talk about the the body and then i talk about what i went through for the mindset to really really unveil the things that that are rolling around in our heads that may have been from way back in the past that were lies that we tell ourselves about ourselves. It's amazing how many men are so successful in life, and yet there's this thing in their head that's still rolling around. Yeah. And a lot of times, unfortunately, and this is why I, I, I hit the fatherhood piece, because I think it's such a foundation to life. Unfortunately, a lot of times it comes from a father that said something yes. to that man. He was growing up. You'll never amount to anything. And that guy has a drive in him to be so successful, and he's killing it. And everybody around him is looking and seeing, wow, this guy's doing so well. Yet in his mind, he's he continues with, you'll never amount to anything. Mm. And he can't overcome it. And he's believing a lie. And even if he's got all of his stuff dialed in, that mindset is going to hold him back. He'll never be the man that's confident. And so we need to learn about that. So I talk about that mindset in that section too, about the the things that I had to do to change my own mindset to get it on the right path. And then, you know, the spiritual side. And I talk about that in the book, just the things that that you do every day, you're spending time in the word and prayer and the things the the things that you do every day so that that spiritual side of your life is strong and then you're ready to go. You know, my favorite, you know, the, the favorite idea of mine is, is that, you know, sometimes it can be very overwhelming. Guys can say, well, I'm, I'm kind of in a really bad spot right now. And moving forward seems like such a big mountain to climb. And I'm like, okay, you just need to take the first step. And really you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, what can I do today that's going to make this guy just a little bit better than the guy I saw in the mirror yesterday? Mm. That's it. And if you do that every day, 365 days a year, you will be a completely different man next year. Yeah. You know, I, I, I talk in the book, it's like, up there's the mountain peak. And that's where ultimately you want to go. And you want to have a good vision of that. But once you got that vision, you're just like, okay, this is the man I want to be. Then you got to bring it down and say, okay, now I'm going to look at the next, the step, the one step in front of me. Just take the step. And then I'm going to take the next step. And those are those days where I'm just doing something a little bit better than what I did yesterday. Mm, yeah, that's really important. You You have a personal ethos, too, that you talk about. And I really like it. And and what are those? Just just to remind people, because I think it's a it's a it's a daily reminder of your personal goals. And I know maybe you can talk to them. I know it's about be true to the man in the mirror, but you can explain it. Yeah, yeah, it's my mission. Um, my personal mission: honor God. Yeah, be true to the man in the mirror, and be a rock for those around me. Yeah, and so that daily grind is is really designed so that I'm able to accomplish that. Yeah. If I'm I'm looking at body, mind, and spirit, what what I'm doing is I'm I'm you know concentrating in on okay, honoring God, be true to the man in the mirror, and what I mean by that is don't be influenced by others' opinions, expectations, chasing the validation of other people. You know you got to do that mindset work that we were talking about to get yourself to the point where you're not influenced by those things anymore. Because when you're influenced by those things, you're trying to be someone that you're not. You're trying to be somebody else. And so really, 
it's be the man that that God created you to be because you have a unique position in this world. God made each one of us for a unique reason. Like we all have this mission that's under the big mission of God. And so it's trying to figure out that that mission for yourself. So, um, but being true to yourself, being authentic and speaking your truth, you know, and then be a rock for those around me. That's, that's in your home. That's in your workplace. You know, this is what men are called to be that we are called to, to, you know, men step up to the things that nobody else wants to, wants to do, but they need to be done. Mm. And they provide safety and security and structure for others. So, you know, this is, this is what men need to do. And in order to step up to things that you don't want to do, you need to train by doing hard things. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that's what this is all about. It's pushing yourself in to address the things that you really don't want to address. Yeah. Cause they're painful, you know, but, but you, you need to lean into those things because what happens is over time you, you start to develop this thing where it's like, I'm not afraid of doing hard things. Mm -hmm. And so that will, that will go out into the rest of your life. And when it comes time for something hard, you know, you got to address that personnel issue at work or, you know, you have that conversation, you need to sit down with someone you love, all those kinds of things. You, you will do it because you are routinely pushing yourself to do hard things. Mm, I love it. What about, um, why is uh, fellowship important for men? Why do we need other men um, to help us in this journey? Because what you've talked about so far is this idea of personal, you know, uh, you know, reflection, uh, you know, setting you know, a personal mission. It's the daily grind. But why is having other men around you uh, just as important? Yeah. You know, um, nobody understands men like men. <laughs> True. And and the world, uh, you know, everybody around us is trying to tell us, you know, give us these messages about who men are and what they should be and all that kind of stuff. And you know, what I've discovered is, you know, I, I find out by the examples in Scripture and being around other strong men. I have learned so much from being around other strong men. But what's, unfortunately, what's happening today, you know, there's a a rising suicide rate among men. It, it's, you know, it continues to rise. And I think a lot of that is because there's this masculine energy that's bottled up inside of men and society doesn't seem to be okay with that being released in any way. That masculine energy is is almost being demonized. And so, and but men understand that. And what happens is you, you got to get rid of that energy, you know? And that's why, you know, we love working out and we love being around other men where we can just let loose. You need that. You need to have be around. And men understand that it's, it's, it's crazy what we do. Like we, we will, we will pile on ourselves. Like we will, we will be like, okay, this is my responsibility. And that is, and that is, and that is, and that is, and <clears throat> this is going well, this isn't going so well. I'm kind of stuck here or whatever. And if you don't have another man that you can run that by and say, Hey, look, this thing isn't going well in my relationship with my wife. I, you know, I need somebody to talk to about this. You know, so many men, they don't have that. So it just keeps building up, building up, building up. And they don't have any way to let that stuff out. And, and what happens is it's just silent. They're sitting here in silence and it's building up and building up and building up. And then you got people that seem like they got it all together and boom, there's a suicide and we lose another brother. Yeah. And, and so I talk about that in the book. It's like, we need other men and we need to be very purposeful about putting ourselves around other men and pulling other men into our groups because, because that's what happens. You got all these examples of like Robin Williams and, 
you know, Anthony Bourdain and and Heath Ledger and those kinds of things, those individuals that everybody from the outside looks in and says, man, they got the world. They got they got everything. They're they're on the right path, you know, and all of a sudden, bang, mm-hmm. they're gone. And and so you see all those things. And I just really think that, you know, men need other men. They need to understand um that that's how you really men understand men and they understand how we build those things up and they understand that we need that release. And, and so, um, and we really need to talk about the deep things. We need to talk about the relationship with our wife. We need to talk about our spiritual journeys. And, you know, I've had so many conversations with guys that they're not Christians, but they're, they're, they know something's missing and we're sitting and we are talking about things and, and I can share my journey with them and, and things resonate with, you know, there's not a lot of places for men to have those kind of conversations mm-hmm. in this world. Yeah. And I don't see the world coming up with a solution that's going to keep, turn things around for men. It, it It's going to have to be the same thing it's always been in history. Men need to step up. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, one of the things I want to touch on too real quick is uh, this idea of a legacy. Now, your father left a positive legacy for you, your brother, and any pretty much everyone he came in contact with. He left this, this um, <clears throat> you know, you, <laughs> you knew where he stood, you knew, you knew where he was, uh, and, and he left this positive influence in, in all of your lives. Uh, how do we as men uh, leave a positive legacy for our families and and for our employees and for uh, our community and the people that are in our lives? How do we become that positive legacy? I think it all starts with your example. I, um, one of the things I like to say is be the man that you hope that your son becomes mm. and be the man that you hope your daughter marries. You know, it all starts with us. So a little bit of self-reflection and filling in our gaps. How strong are we physically, mentally, spiritually? Are we the example? One of the things that I, I said right from the start with writing the book and all the things that I do with Men of Grit is that um, I'm not going to be one of these guys that talks about some theory. And I've done that with my career too. It's like, I'm going to be a guy that, that I'm going to teach what I've done. Like what I know works because I've experienced it. I've done it. And, and so as men in all of our lives, we want to lead, lead and we want to uh, leave a legacy. We need to be first. We need to be the example, the man that God has called us to be. That is the strongest um, tool that we have when it comes to leading others or being a good father is our example. Our example is the thing that people are going to be attracted to the most. The thing that they're going to remember the most is how we were, how we conducted ourselves. You know, that's why I say be the rock for those around you. Um, and you can't be that unless you are being the best man that you can be, be good at being a good man. And if we're good at being a good man, then all of these other things come out of that. You know, we are going, we won't be the man that cowers. We will be the man that sees something that needs to be done. And we will say that needs to be done. Someone needs to do it. I'm the guy to do it. Mm -hmm. We will take care of, you know, and people around us are going to see that and they're going to be like, man, I want to be like that guy. You know, I want to, I want to live like that. And, and so, you know, and that's not easy to do. You need to be, you need to have other strong men around you that can help you stay on that path. And, um, so you know, to me, it's it's mostly about being the example. I love that. I think it's a really important important leadership skill too. Is is lead by example, right? Don't only 
you know, I, I always believe that as a, <clears throat> as a boss that I don't, I don't ask people to do things that I'm not willing to do myself. And I think uh, that's, and people recognize that when you are that kind of a leader and you, you have that influence in the world, they recognize that, <clears throat> you know, if Jerry's going to do it, I'm going to do it. You know, if John's going to do it, I'll, I'm going to do it. So uh, we lead by example. We lead, we lead in front of people. Absolutely. Um, what's your hopes for this book now that it's out there? Uh, it's selling like crazy. Um, you're getting a lot of feedback. What, what's your hopes for this, for this book and what it does in the world? You know, I hope it lights that fire in men. Um, I, I, I have this vision in my mind of guys reading the book and getting together and going through some of the questions that are, are at the end of the chapters and having discussions about it, you know, and those questions you know, they're, they're just to get the wheels turning, right? And so what what I hope happens with this book is that that it lights that spark mm. in men that, that they want to strive for better. They want to be everything that God has created them to be as a man. And, um, you know, if, if guys come out of reading this book and they got that fire, and they go into their churches and they go into their homes. And, you know, because strong men make strong families, strong marriages, strong families, strong churches, strong communities, strong workplaces, strong countries. It all starts with that man being strong to hear the call of God that says, be strong. Mm. And for guys to step up to that, I mean, it gives me chills. You know, the other day I got a, a, a video from a guy over in New Zealand and his son was reading my book. Wow. And to hear this young man reading the book, it's an emotional thing. It's on the other side of the world. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that those ideas that God gave me in my head that I wrote on a page that are now going into a mind of a son and a father, and they're reading it together. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's powerful. I think of the, the analogy of leaders and, and men and, and, uh, the idea of ripples that we are, you know, we create these ripples that just go out from us and they can be negative. And, and there's a lot of people that are destructive in, in their, in, in their influence on the world. And there's others that leave just these positive ripples that just, and they go for miles and uh, having someone reading your book, you know, on the other side of the globe and being affected. That's the, one of those positive ripples that I think about it. And, uh, and that's an example of how we can leave a positive legacy uh, in the world by being, by being, you know, what, what we were designed to be, you know, as men. And uh, you're making that influence through this book and you're influencing someone half a world away. It's just, it, it's wild. And again, it's that ripple, that influence. Uh, Jerry, this is a fantastic book. I love it. Um, and again, I'm gonna throw it up for the screen for everybody. It's called Men of Grit, uh, Strong as Steel. There it goes. You can't miss that cover. I love the cover. Um, how can people find out more about you uh, and this new book? Yeah, so the the book's available on Amazon. Um, you can go there to Amazon. Also on my website, menofgrit.com. So it's all one word, men of grit, all one word, dot com. Um, and then I'm most active on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and that's men underscore of underscore grit. So that's the same on Twitter and Instagram. So any one of those you can go and, and, and from those you can contact me directly, DM, whatever. But, um, but yeah, the book's out there on Amazon now and it's, uh, and if you read it and you like it, give me a review. The reviews really help to boost it and get the message out to the rest of the world. You know, that, that, is the the thing that you could really that people could do for me that would help get this message out and that's really what I want you know god's given me a heart for men and i understand the struggles that men face 
and I want men to win. Mm. That's that I want that so bad, you know. So that's a uh, that's a that's a passion of mine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it it comes right through in this book. Comes right through in this interview. Um, we're going to put links in the show notes for all those resources. I highly encourage you to follow Jerry. We're going to put links in the social media. But 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 know this: he's going to be working out every day. <laughs> and you're going to have trouble keeping up with him. And, uh, and, and I love it. Um, he lives uh, l- what he talks about. Uh, he leads by example. Highly encourage you to, to follow him. I highly encourage you to pick up this book. It is a fantastic book. It's the book that's needed right now. And, uh, and I really highly encourage everyone that's listening in um, to get this book, if not for yourself, for your son, for your husband, for your the, the men in your life, because they, they need to hear this message. They need to tap into who they are as men and be the leaders be and leave the legacy that they are meant to, to, to leave in the world. So, Jerry, I want to appreciate you writing this book. I thank you for writing this book. And thanks for coming on the show and sharing this message. It's very important. You bet. My pleasure. I've enjoyed it, John. Thanks again. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Hey, it's Tim from 50 Years of Music with 50-Year-Old White Guys, the comedy podcast you had no idea you needed. Join Ben, Jeff, and me as we continue our musical road trip back through the years and around the globe. See, just when you thought all white guys were like Joe Rogan, you come across three educators trying to remember when we were cool. 50 Years of Music with 50-Year-Old White Guys. Electric Acid. Are you passionate about saving the planet for future generations? Do you want to learn how to do it? If yes, then you need to tune in to the Nature Back podcast. It's a talk show covering the changing world around us. From renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, circular economy, to ESG and social innovation. Don't miss this opportunity to discover how you can join the movement and make a difference. Subscribe to the Nature Back podcast today on your favorite platform and get ready to be amazed.